Good morning. Young persons, welcome back to the High School Woodshop. And uh, you know we're making a series of videos to cover the machines and the tools and the techniques that we use here in the uh, woodshop. This segment, we're going to take a look at this handy dandy DeWalt planer. This is an awesome machine I have one just like it at home. Can't wait to tell you about it. We use a planer for taking a board that's reasonably uh, straight, flat, and true and making it thinner. So, for example, you're going to make something like a uh, uh, cutting board. And so you take a bunch of these different pieces and you glue them together, you know, and it's all rough and, and there's glue sticking up. And then you send that thing through the planer and it comes out nice and smooth. Sweet. So planer, one of my favorite machines to use here in the shop. We're going to use it a lot. This is a 13 inch model, which refers to the width of the throat, meaning that you can have a piece of material that's uh, 13 inches wide uh, go through it. Uh, it works fine. Lasts a long time. Won't rust, bust, or collect dust. Love this machine. Thank you, Sean, for buying it. I want to start by pointing out some of the parts and pieces. Right here on the front, we have a uh, on-off switch. You turn it on by pulling out on the bottom of the red switch. And pushing it back in. There is a little circuit breaker right next to the power switch. If this machine stops working as if it was unplugged and the circuit breaker is out, you must come and get me before you do anything else. This is the feed speed switch. This changes the speed of the cutter head. It has a rough cut, which is number two, and then when you flip it over to one, finishing cut, it almost doubles the uh, revolutions of the cutter head. From 96 cuts per inch to 179 cuts per inch. This switch is only moved with the machine on and running. On the back of the machine here, we have the dust port. This machine here makes a huge mess, so the vacuum cleaner is always connected when we're going to use it. You can see I have the vacuum cleaner hose connected to the dust port right now. This knob over here on the side is called the turret stop. And what it does is it enables you to make the same cut. If you're going to be running a lot of boards through and making the same cuts, then we use this knob so that we make that process work a little bit more efficiently. We generally don't use this knob in this class. Material goes through this machine starting on this side and it goes through and it comes out on the other side. So we call this the infeed table. And on the other side, of course, that would be the outfeed table. The hand crank over here on this side is for setting depth. So this is the depth adjustment crank. And basically it moves the whole machine up or down on these four posts. There's a scale on the front of the machine that tells you what the height of the cutter head is above this surface. So as I crank it counterclockwise, it's making the whole machine come up and now I'm at approximately two inches. And if I go the other direction, if I go clockwise, it's moving the machine down. If I go counterclockwise, it's moving the machine up. This is the depth adjustment scale and we use this for the initial setup on the machine. This is the material cut gauge. It has a little red pointer. And basically what this thing is gonna do is tell you um, how much of the material is going to be removed. The cutter head is up here in the top, so it's going to be removing the material from the top of the board. The cutter head is located inside this yellow box. It's up underneath. The surface on your infeed table is practically a mirror, so if you look in there you can see the cutter head in the reflection off your infeed table. You're never going to reach your hand inside the planer because the cutter head will typically have one blade down and even with the machine off you will slice open your skin um, if you come in contact with that cutter head. If you have plans to use this machine the first thing that you're going to do is prepare yourself. Once again of course if you're tired, sick, under the influence you'll be taking the day off and just taking a seat at the table. Before you do anything else, you're going to get safety glasses and put them on. Safety glasses are required to be worn in the wood shop anytime any machine is running and you're not seated at the table. Step number two is to prepare the machine. 
First thing that must be done on this machine to get ready to use it is that we will attach the vacuum. This thing makes a mess. The vacuum helps to eliminate some of that mess and it knocks down the noise just a little bit. This machine is very noisy. The second part is the thing to prepare the machine is we're going to set this for the initial depth of cut. And we want to set that for the thickest part of the board. So this board here is relatively uh, consistent in uh, thickness and it's about three quarters of an inch. So basically I will set the machine for three quarters of an inch. I usually set it for a sixteenth of an inch more. So three quarters plus one sixteenth. I would set it for thirteen sixteenths for the first pass. Step number three, check the material. The material must be at least 12 inches in length and it must be at least a half inch thick to go through this machine. There's other things that we can do if we're doing something that's a little bit thinner. Uh, we'll build a special sled to go through the machine. As you check your material, you want to make sure that it doesn't have any large cracks or knots. For example, this board right here has a pretty good crack going in it right there. As the material goes through the machine, it has two large rollers, one on each side of the cutter head. And what those rollers do is they push the material down flat on this table for the cutter head to work. So, if you run a board through that's crooked or warped, it is going to produce a warped board on the other side that's just a little bit thinner. The side that goes down on the table must be flat, straight, and true in order for it to make this side flat, straight, and true also. Step number four is to use the machine correctly. With a planer, it is possible to have a kickback on this machine, which means you're trying to run the material through this way, and it either spits the whole board or a part of the board back out this other side. For example, if it had that knot or a crack in it. So as you're using the machine, we're going to stand off to one side or the other. If for some reason there's something gets clogged inside the machine, you're not going to remove it with your hand. What we'll do is we'll unplug the machine, number one. Number two, we'll raise the carriage up all the way to the top so it's easy to see in there. And then you'll call me over and I'll deal with it. I do not want you to reach your hand into that machine for any reason. I don't care how unplugged it is. I don't care if all the power is off in the whole building. Do not reach your hand inside that machine. You have an excellent chance of getting a cut, a severe cut. Running material through the planer, the cut must go with the grain. We're never going to go across the grain through the planer. The planer will shred the board. Once you have the machine on, you've put your board in and the, and the machine is working, never change the depth of cut while the machine is working. If you're unhappy with how you set it, you're going to wait until the board goes completely through and then make the adjustment and, and pass the board through again. If the material goes through because you had it set too low, we're going to turn the machine off, raise the carriage up, remove the board, try again. Step number five is to deal with the unexpected. With this machine here, as with everything else in the wood shop, you have a chance to be distracted and have a problem. If somebody comes up to you and taps you on the shoulder and tries to get your attention or talk to you while you're using this machine, you need to ignore them until you complete what you're supposed to be doing. The machine is turned off and you have your material in your hand. It's not worth it. Just a moment of distraction will get you hurt. I'm going to say that most accidents in this shop have to do with complacency, which means taking things for granted and thinking you know what you're doing, and number two, dealing with a distraction. Step number six should probably be step number one. But step number six says I want you to use common sense. If you're doing something on this machine or any other machine in here, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right, it doesn't look right, stop what you're doing. Back away from the machine. Come and get me. Back away from the machine and watch someone else use the machine and maybe that will help you remember what it was that you were taught. I don't want you to do something on this machine or any other machine in this shop if you're not confident of what you're doing, of what's going to happen as you use the machine, and what happens next. I can't wait till we do this.